However, I do think my opinion's right. If you got a different opinion, I just hate that you're wrong. Praise the Lord. But, but that's all right. And some of us say, well, why in the world would you even teach on that? Because, well, it's in the Bible. <laughs> if it's in the Bible, if it's in the Bible, then, uh, uh, then I think we ought to teach on it. I want to talk to you about Melchizedek tonight. And he's only found historically just one, two, three, four, three verses. Three verses in, in Genesis, Genesis 14. This is the historical event in Genesis 14. Then it's mentioned in Psalms 110 prophetically. Prophetically. So when you get to Psalms 110, you know something is different about this person that you didn't get in Genesis. If you just read Genesis, you just may have thought it was an earthly king from somewhere and that Abraham met. But uh, in... in uh, when you get into Psalms 110, he begins to speak prophetically about him and the office that he holds. Then when you get into the book of Hebrews, he is mentioned several times. And as Brother Tory read the seventh chapter of the book of Hebrews tonight, a great part of that has to do with him. So... Whoever is the author of Hebrews, which I believe it was Paul, and uh, uh, you may not agree with that either, but you can be wrong on that too. But, brother, and I'm going to need you up here. You, you, these boys here, they, they, that's good. That, that's all right. They got room over here. Uh, filling these rooms. I'm making deacons and preachers and apostles and prophets, altar workers. Tide payers and aisle runners and singers and choir leaders and Sunday school teachers, school teachers, amen, prophets, and amen, out of these uh, uh, boys on the front row. I done anointed two of them, but don't get exalted, uh, Jacob anointed a rock. <laughs> And it's running off your head, you know what I mean? <laughs> Amen. Well, I've got to keep them humble. Amen. 14th chapter book of Genesis. You'll stand with me. We'll, we'll read this and we'll get into the lesson. Now, I'm not going to plan on me doing a lot of spitting and carrying on tonight. So, uh, just hope you got your thinking cap on. 18. Let me set the stage of this. Lot had went down to Sodom. And uh, folks had come by there and captured Lot and took him off. Abraham took the men that was with him, went and rescued Lot and slew the kings. And it's called, matter of fact, it's called the slaughter of the kings. And immediately after the slaughter of the kings, Abraham is where verse 18 picks up. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was a priest of the Most High God. You know, that ought to be a clue right there. You know, if anybody, anybody ought to have a clue there, here you meet a guy in the Bible, and he's got, you know, he's got the elements of the Lord's Supper. He's got bread and wine. There he comes there. They meet him on salt and And you don't read nothing else about that until you get into the Lord's Supper, you know. So that ought to have been a little clue right there. Uh, he was the priest of the Most High God, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be the Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and the earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all, without any commandment, without any instruction, without anything. Something in Abraham just told him, when you run into this fellow, you ought to pay tithes. Praise the Lord. That'd be good for some of y'all to run an old mail around here. Praise the Lord. 
<laughs> thank you, Jesus. <laughs> well, will you pray with me? Dear God, I thank you for your kindness and your goodness. I ask you to help us tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, I appreciate you. God, in Jesus' name, Lord, I love you. Touch me, Lord. Lord, the more we know about you, the better we can please you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I want Brother Andy to get me Hebrews 7 and 7. We're going to go back and forth with that. I'm uh, in this 14th chapter of Genesis. This man just steps out of nowhere. He just steps out of nowhere and steps into Abraham's life. And I'll say right at the offset, just so we're not you know, where I ain't trying to play some mystery game with you. Uh, I believe this was a theophany. Now, let me explain to you what a theophany is. Theophany is a big old long uh, theological word. Theo, the Greek word for God is theo. Fanny is appearance. So, theophany means appearance of God, that God appears. I think, if I'm not mistaken, there was like 60-some appearances in the Old Testament that God decides to appear in some form. Uh, let, let me give you some that you're very familiar with. How many remembers the fire in the burning bush? Well, that was a theophany. God appeared as a fire. How many remembers about the cloud by day? Well, God appeared as a cloud by day. Remember, he's about a fire by night. Well, God appeared as a fire by night. How many remembers when, when, when the Lord was making, I, I preached on this not long ago, when the Lord was making a covenant with Abraham, how he had him cut up all of them pieces of the animals. And the Bible said, said this lamp came down and moved among the pieces. Well, that was, that was a theophany. That's what that was. God was, God was appearing. God was appearing. And uh, all through Scripture, God does that. He appears. Now, God didn't have a permanent body in the Old Testament. He had these manifestations that were, that were uh, theophanies or angelic appearances that when God wanted to appear to someone, he would, he would appear to them. And then when, when that uh, was served, then that body would no longer be. And uh, folks that argue against this being a theophany, uh, one of their arguments is, well, the Lord appeared unto him in the 12th chapter of the book of Genesis, and, uh, and the Lord, then why didn't he know who he was? Well, God also appeared to him in the 18th chapter of Genesis, and he didn't know who he was. So evidently the appearances were not, it's very simple, evidently the appearances were not the same. But the Lord never had a permanent body until uh, Mary, Mary and the Holy Ghost produced that body that uh, is called the Son of God. But here in this chapter, this man walks in to history. And he blesses Abraham. Abraham, he has bread and wine in his hand, uh, figuring, foreshadowing uh, the, when, when the Lord becomes the high priest. When he becomes the high priest in flesh and blood, this resembles, this is, how many knows the, the uh, flesh and blood is what is symbolized in the Lord's Supper. So here he is testifying to Abraham that he is coming in flesh and blood. And uh, Abraham, Abraham pays him tithes, pays him tithes of all. Now let me read Psalms 110. And then we're really going to get into this lesson. The Lord will. I hope I don't put you pumice late. Psalms 110 and verse 1. And the Lord said unto my Lord, Set thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. 
and the Lord shall send the rod of strength out of Zion and shall rule in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of the holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, this word order means rank. Thou art a priest forever after the rank of Melchizedek. I wrote something down here. Yeah, let me, I found this. And let me, let me read this. How could Jesus become a priest forever after something less than himself? Now think about that. How could Jesus become a priest forever after something less than himself? It wouldn't even make any sense. I just wrote that down. And I wrote this down too where, where Jesus, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but, but Jesus told them in the 8th chapter of John, he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day and was glad. Now, I want Brother Andy to get me 7 and 7 of, of, of Hebrews. Hebrew chapter 7 and verse 7. And we're going to really kind of start this lesson if the Lord help me. 7 and 7. Mm -hmm. The less is blessed of the better. Now in this chapter, when we go to the chapter, you'll understand. The less here, brother, Tori, do you have power to type stuff up there, put that on that board? I want you to put less is Abraham. And better is Melchizedek. The less is blessed of the better. The less is Abraham, and the better is Melchizedek. Now, we'll see that when we get to the seventh chapter, but I, I want to read you, I want to read you some other translations. Rim says this, the less by the greater is blessed. Weymouth said, it is always the inferior who is blessed by the superior. Philip's Translation said, the receiver of the blessing is inferior to the one who gives it. The 20th century New Testament says, it is a superior who blesses the inferior. So the less is Abraham, and the better is Melchizedek. Now a lot of folks believe that Melchizedek was just a, a, a Gentile a Gentile priest. And and uh, uh, have you got your Bibles? Did you bring your Bible to church tonight? I'm going to be doing most of the reading, but Brother Andy's going to help me because we're starting in Genesis 12 and 1. And the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee, and thy name shall be great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curses thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed." Question number one. If Melchizedek was an earthly priest, and, it was, and, and that's talking about Jerusalem or Salem being an earthly uh, kingdom or village, then why would God need Abraham if God already had a people? And he already had a, a priest for those people. Why would God even need Abraham? But now remember, 
the less is blessed of the better. Now, what did God say He's going to do for Abraham? I'll make thee a great nation. Brother Andrew, read your passage again. We're going to be going back and forth. You just hold your finger there. We're going to, we, okay, read it. And without all contradiction, yes. the less is blessed of the better. The less is blessed of the better. Listen to what God said about Abraham. I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee. I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee. Curse them that curse thee. And in thee will all the families of the earth be blessed. Brother, Tori, flip that back up there again. We're going to go back and forth. The less is blessed of the better. You're there. What does this say about the less? I'll make thee a great nation. I'll make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee. I will curse them that curses thee. And in thee shall all the nations be blessed. Now that sounds pretty major to me. But Hebrews calls him the less. The less is blessed or the better. All right, 15 and 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in the vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Let's look at verse 18. In the same day the Lord made covenant with Abraham unto, unto thy seed I have given this land. So God said, Abraham, I'm going to be your I'm going to be your shield. I'm going to be your exceeding great reward. Look at verse 5. And he brought him forth and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars. If thou art able to number them, he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Of course, in this, you know, you've, you've got this this uh, wonderful thing that took place. And, and, and the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. All right, back back up to the other. Read it, brother Andy. Huh? And without all contradiction, yes. the less is blessed of the better. He was going to be Abraham's shield. He was going to be Abraham's exceeding great reward. And under Abraham and his seed, he was going to give the promise. That's pretty... That's pretty good for the less, ain't it? All right, let's look at 17 and 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For I have, for a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come forth out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give to thee and thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger. And, and, and God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore and thy seed after thee in all of their generations. And it keeps on going down here. And, and, and verse uh, uh, 21. And I will make, and my covenant I will establish with Isaac and Sarah. She'll, she'll bear unto thee. She'll set this time next year. So God is, God is saying, God is making all of this covenant with Abraham. And what does it say? And without all contradiction. Yes. The less is blessed of the better. I mean, I, I'm making a case for Abraham. If you've not figured that out, I'm making a case for Abraham. How, if he's less, then who is this, who is this better? If he's inferior, who is this superior? Where is, where's the promises made to this superior earthly king? Where's the promises made to this superior earthly king as some folks uh, would think. In the 18th chapter. And verse 17. 
And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham surely shall become a great and mighty nation. And all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. In whom are all the nations going to be blessed through? Through who? Abraham. Abraham. And what does it say? And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. I'm making a case for Abraham, okay? 26, 1 through 5. There was a famine in the land beside the first famine in the days of Abraham. Uh, and, and Isaac went into Amalek, the king of Philip into Gizar. And the Lord appeared to him and said, uh, go, thou not, uh, to, uh, go, go thou not down to Egypt and dwell in the land which I shall tell thee. Sojourn, sojourn in this land and I will be with thee. And I will bless thee. Uh, for unto thee and unto thy seed will I give all these countries and I will perform the earth which I or the oath which I swore unto who? Abraham. Abraham thy father I will make thy seed to be the multitude as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all these countries in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Who was the oath made to? Huh? And what? Without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. The less. Who was the oath made to? Abraham. All right, let's look here in 28 and 4. And I will give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee, and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land that thou be a stranger, which God gave to who? Abraham. Abraham. Who was the promise given to? Abraham. Who was the promise given to? Abraham. What does it say? And without all contradiction. Yes. The less is blessed of the better. Now, here's something interesting. In Exodus 6 and 3. Six and two. God spake unto Moses, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, and unto Isaac, and unto Jacob. But by my name I was not known unto them. By my name Jehovah, I was not known unto them. Verse 15. I'm losing something here somewhere. Give me, folks, I, I wrote something down wrong. Anyhow, let, 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 let me say this. In Scripture, you find this, I don't know how many times that you'll find this, but you'll find it over and over and over in Scripture where it says that. And Jesus quotes this. He says, I am the God of who? Isaac and Jacob. Now, if Melchizedek was an earthly king and he was greater than Abraham, I wonder why I never said I'm the God of Melchizedek. Now, he was an earthly king and he was greater. What does it say? And without all contradiction. Yes. The less is blessed of the better. If Melchizedek was an earthly king and he was better or greater or superior to Abraham. Well, why wouldn't God ever say, I am the God of Melchizedek? All right. But he said, I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Abraham. Well, what does it say, Brother Andy? And without all controversy, contradiction, yes. the less is blessed of the better. Less is blessed of the better. Look here in, in 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles 20 and 7. 
I know I'm spending some time there, but there's a reason for that. I want to entrench that in your mind, how big Abraham was. Art thou not our God? Who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham? What? 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 Abraham gets the title. He's God's friend forever. And what does it say? Without all contradiction. Uh huh. The less is blessed of the better. Now, if Melchizedek was an earthly king, hear me. If Melchizedek was an earthly king and he was superior to Abraham, the less is blessed of the better. Abraham is the inferior. Melchizedek is is the superior. And he was an earthly king. And he was superior to Abraham. Why wouldn't he have been called a friend of God? Are, are, you, are, are, are you following me? Yes, sir. Then way over here in the New Testament, it picks it up in James chapter 2. Whoop! Be like this, be like scrambled eggs, glory to God. Man, I got it mixed up. I have to start back all over again. No, I'm. James 2 and 23. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And what? And he was called the friend of God. Now, nobody else in the Old Testament was called a friend of God. So if Melchizedek is an earthly king, and he's better than Abraham, why wouldn't he have been called the friend of God? I'm just trying to get your thinking cap on. Now, if you think that, I don't know, Abraham, every priest in the Old Testament besides Melchizedek comes out of Abraham's loins. Every prophet comes out of Abraham's loins. Every king comes out of Abraham's loins. And then it don't stop there. Matthew 1 and 1. The book of generations of Jesus Christ, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of who? The Son of who? The son of who? Every priest come out of Abraham's loins. Every prophet come out of Abraham's loins. Every king come out of Abraham's loins. And here the son of God is going to come on the scene. And he's going to come out of Abraham's loins. Because his mama is a daughter of Abraham. So, so, I'm trying to figure this. The less, is Abraham, and the better is Melchizedek. That's if, if Melchizedek is just an earthly priest, just an earthly king, just a, just, just a natural man. Then, 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 then here, 
it's odd that you only find him once historically in the Old Testament. You'll find the name Abraham in your Bible 312 times. You'll find the name Melchizedek twice in the Old Testament and not over six or seven times in the New Testament, and there's a reason for that. We'll get to that after a while. But uh, uh, I don't know. Here yeah, she were okay. Can I do some more reading? Romans chapter 4. Not only was Abraham important in the Old Covenant, but Abraham holds a prominent position in the, in the New Covenant. Romans, Romans chapter 4. 1 through 3. What shall we say then that Abraham our father which pertained to the flesh, hath found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath worked the glory, but not before God. But what, what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Verse 9. Cometh this blessing then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Verse 12. The father of the circumcision to them who are not of circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, him being not yet circumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not, was not to Abraham and his seed through the law, but through the righteousness which is of by faith. Verse 16. Therefore it is of faith that it might be of grace to the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to that which is of the law, that's of the natural Jew, but also them which is of the faith of Abraham, the father of us all. That's our, us folks that are, in the, that are Gentiles that are in the church. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him he believed even God who quickened the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations uh, according to that which was spoken, uh, so thy seed shall be uh, not being weak in faith, not considering uh, his own body, now dead. He was about 120 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in the faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded uh, what, he, what he had promised, he was able to perform also. Therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. And now it was not written for his sake alone that was imputed unto him, but us also, we folks that are in the New Testament church, it shall be imputed if we believe on him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification. So, we're spiritual children of Abraham. We're spiritual children of Abraham. And Paul takes a whole chapter here in the fourth chapter of Romans to tell us that. Now, what does it say, Brother Andy? And without all contradiction, yeah. the less is blessed now, now, Paul writes a whole chapter here in the fourth chapter of Romans that's saying we're children of God by faith and we're children of an earthly king Melchizedek by faith. We're children of Abraham by faith. So, you know, without contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. But Paul don't stop there. Let's look at the third chapter of the book of Galatians. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get over to it. I know some of you bored us. Not, hallelujah. Three and... 3 and 6. 
even as Abraham believed God and was counted unto him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith are the same, are the children of Abraham. The scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith before the gospel. Let me go back and read that again. Uh, the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham. Abraham had the gospel preached to him. And that in thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they that are of faith are blessed with Abraham, are blessed with faithful Abraham. Let me move on down to just save some time. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Verse 16, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith, it's not the seeds as many, but the seeds of one, even thy seed, which is Christ. Watch verse 17. But I say this, that the covenant which was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it would not make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Now look here in verse, in verse uh, uh, 27. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have been on Christ, there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond or free, male or female, but all are one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. What does it say? And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Now here we got two chapters in the New Testament that places our relationship in the church with the promise that was made to Abraham. And God even making it clear in both chapters that not only are the circumcised included. Because when God told Abraham, God told Abraham once, you're going to count the sand of the sea. So shall thy seed be. That was Abraham's earthly seed. But then he said, count the stars of heaven. That's Abraham's heavenly seed. I'm a star. How about you? Amen. We're, we're part of that heavenly seed. I would like for Brother Andy to get this one. And that's in uh, Amos 3 and 2. And then I'm going to go to the seventh chapter of the book of Hebrews. Well, I'm, 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 I'm making better time than I thought I would. Let me go and make sure I hadn't. Hadn't, hadn't. All right. Amos 3 and 2. Ye only have I known of all the families of the earth. Wait. 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 If there was an earthly people in Salem and Melchizedek was their priest, then how could God say that? Are you thinking? Read it again, Brother Andy. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Read it again. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Now, how many families did he know? Hmm? Huh? Well... If there was another earthly people of God in Salem and there was an earthly king by the name of Melchizedek, how come he didn't know about them? You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Okay, now we're going to get, let me find where I've got all this scribbled down. All right, now let's go to Hebrews. Brother Andy, you're going to pick up the seventh chapter, and we're going to, before I get there, I've got to read a few places in Hebrews, but that's going to be our mainstay. Now we go from, we go from, we go from Genesis 14 to Psalms 110 
And then Melchizedek is never mentioned again. You won't find him again till you get to the book of Hebrews. And then when you get to the book of Hebrews, here's the first time. Five and six. And he saith in another, in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek or the rank of Melchizedek. Verse 10. Call of God a high priest after the order or the rank of Melchizedek. Uh, 6 and 20. Whether the forerunner is for us, entered even Jesus, made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now here we come to the seventh chapter of, of the book of Hebrews. Now let me go over this again. Genesis 14 is Melchizedek historically. Psalms 110 is Melchizedek prophetically. Now here we're going to get into the seventh chapter of Hebrews and Paul is going to give us a doctrinal overview of who, of who this being is. And, and, and uh, what does it say, brother? And let's pick it up seven and one and start. This Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the king mm -hmm. and blessed him, mm -hmm. to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First being by interpretation, king of life. Now I want to ask you a question. How could an earthly king ever be called the king of righteousness? Mother, brother, flip over. I think it's 23 and 5 of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 23 and 5. And brother Adam, Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. Why don't you read that again? To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. Yes. Yes. Now, what what folks say that 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 say that Melchizedek is an earthly king is that uh, that Salem there is not really Salem. That's Jerusalem. I, I read today where uh, uh, I read today and read a couple of times where some folks say that the uh, Melchizedek was Shem. Yeah, well, Shem. Well, we're going to find out it can't be Shem. It ain't, I, we, we, I can take care of that easily. But I want to I give you this. When has Jerusalem ever had any peace? They ain't got no peace yet. And they just got through having a war when Abraham met Melchizedek. When was Jerusalem? When did Jerusalem ever have any peace? But, but this says... This man, this, this person, this being, is the king of righteousness. What does it say in 23 and 5 of, of, of Jeremiah? Behold, the day is come. Yes. Saith the Lord. Yes. That I will raise unto David a righteous branch. Yes. And a king shall reign and prosper. Yes. And shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Yes. And the days of Judah shall be saved. Yes. And Israel shall dwell safely. Yes. And this is the name whereby he shall be called. Yes. The Lord our righteousness. There's only one king of righteousness. Okay. And it sure wasn't some Gentile uh, Jebusite priest back there. This is not, it didn't say he was a righteous king. It said he was a king of righteousness. Lord have mercy. The Bible talks about Isaiah being a prophet. But when he saw the Lord high and lifted up, he said, I'm a man of unclean lips. David said, I am a worm and not a man. Abraham said, I'm coming before you, dust and ashes. This said, this said, back back up there, Brother Andy, what does it say? Yes. 
Yes. He is the king of righteousness. Well, I'm going to tell you who's the Lord of righteousness. This is this fellow right here. He is the Lord of righteousness. That's God himself. And then it said, and he's also the king of what? Salem. Mm -hmm. Which is king of peace. Which is king of peace. Well, what do it say? Uh-huh. Unto us a son is given. Yes. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Yes, yes. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Yes. Counselor. Yes. The mighty God. Yes. The everlasting Father. Yes. The Prince of Peace. The what? The Prince of Peace. The what? The Prince of Peace. The what? The Prince of Peace. What is he called, huh? Woo! King of Peace. What? The Prince of Peace. Yes. King of Peace. What? The Prince of Peace. Next verse. Of what? No of what? Peace there shall be no end. What? Peace there shall be no end. And peace shall there be no end. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of peace. Come on, brother. Brother Andy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without father. I can tell you who Shem's father was. His father was Noah. Somebody said it wasn't recorded. Well, that's recorded. <laughs> Can't be Shem. I can tell you his daddy's name. And then it said, but without father? You know what? You got to try to be dumb. To, you got to try to be dumb to get this wrong. I might not all say that. Praise the Lord. Let me let me be more delicate about that. Let me. I'm trying to think of a delicate way to say that. That's stupid. <laughs> now the now look at God can write. You know, in the beginning was the Word. He don't run out of words. Isaiah forty six and ten said He declared the end from the beginning. One forty five. 147 and 5 of some said, Great is the Lord, great is his power, and his understanding is infinite. Acts 15 and 18, known unto God are all of his works from the beginning of the world. Revelation 1 and 8, he's, he's Alpha and Omega, the beginning. And end. He don't run out of words. God don't run out of words. So God could have just as easily said, The genealogy of his father and his mother is not recorded. He could have said that. He could have said, well, we just don't have any record of who his father and mother was. It don't say that we don't have any record. That ain't what the, that ain't what the, that ain't what the verse says. The verse says he's what? Without father. He's what? Without father. He's what? Without father. He has a father, but we don't know who he is. No, sir. Yes. He has a mother, but we don't know who he is. Right. No. Uh huh? Huh? Yes, yes. What does it say? Without father. Huh? Without father. Huh? Without father. Without who? Without father. Now look it. Now look you, saints. Now look it. Look it. Look it. Look it. Look it. If Mel was an old, was an earthly priest from an earthly kingdom, he had a daddy. And he had a mama. But this says, this says that he is with what? Without father. He don't have a father. Without mother. He don't have a mother. Yes. Without descent. He didn't come from anywhere. Yes. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life. He has no beginning of days. Now I'm going to tell you what. Psalms 90 verse 2 said, From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. That's no beginning of days or ending of life. 1 Timothy 1 and 17, Unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, only wise God. Micah 5 and 2 
the guy that's going to come out of Bethlehem who's going forth has been from old everlasting. There's only one everlasting. There's only one without beginning of days or ending of life. When you get back over, when you get when you get before time, there's only one. Without beginning of days, nor end of life, but is made like unto the Son of God. Go ahead. I looked up that word. Let me find it here. The word made like. This is this is what. It, I'm going to give it to you Kentucky style. I could have read this big long Greek definition. But since we don't have no Greeks in here, it wouldn't help you none. So, so I'm condensing this down to, to where, where me and Brother Smith can get this. I'm digging down to Kentucky folk. Made like. It just simply means it's a pic. He was a picture of. A likeness of. A similitude of. Let me give you another place where this is used in the Bible. The Bible said that Adam Romans 5 Let me get the verse. I lose I lost it. Yeah, Adam's 5 uh, uh, 5 and 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam and the Moses, even those who had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him who was to come? In other words, Adam was made in the image of him who was to come. Adam was a picture. If you want to see, if you want to see what, what... Jesus didn't look like Adam. Adam looked like Jesus. Because that was a thought that he had in his mind. But what this is saying, this said... This, this was a picture. This was a similitude. This was a portrait. Go ahead. Where are you at with Andy? Uh, three, seven and four. Go ahead. Now consider how great this man was. Yeah. Now here is where, here is where that the brethren that feel like that uh, say, well, it calls him a man. It calls him a man. Genesis 18 and 3. 18, 1 through 3. And the Lord appeared unto, unto him in the plains of Amory. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men stood by him. They look like men. Three men. Then when you get in the uh, 33rd verse where they're getting ready to leave and the Lord went his way. This was, this, this was, this was a theophany. Look in 19 and 1. There came unto two angels and when Lot saw them you know he thought that they were men. They looked like men. All angels and theophanies in the Bible are, 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 are called men. Look at uh, Genesis uh, uh, 32 and 24. And Jacob was left alone and wrestled with a what? A man with him at the breaking of the day. And, he, and of, course you know, of course, you know the whole story. And, of course, he knew who he was. What is he, you know, he, he says in verse 30, I've seen God face to face. He's called a man. Uh, uh, 28 and 30, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Mark 16 and 5. There's lots of these, so I'm not going to go into all these. You, you, you're, you can look it up yourself. But all through the Old Testament and New, angels that are seen, angelic appearances, theophanies, are, they're always seen as men. Thought as men. 16 and, I'm just going to give you a couple, 16 and 5. Okay. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side. Always a young man. It's an angel. But it calls him, it calls him a man. Acts 1. Acts 1 and 9. All, all through Scripture. All through Scripture. 
They saw the what, the fourth what in the fire. What did the king see? The fourth what in the fire? Fourth man in the fire. Uh, here, Acts, Acts, Acts 1 and 9. And they looked steadfast toward heaven. As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Okay, I want to take care of of that man. But all right. Go back, Brother Andy. Let's go. Now consider how great this man was. Yes, yes. Unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoil. Yes, yes. And verily they that are of the sons of Levi. Yes. Who received the office of the priesthood. Yes, yes. And the commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. Yes. That is, of their brethren. Yes. Though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Yes. Yes. Received tithes of Abraham. Yes. And blessed him that had the promise. Yes. And without all contradiction. Yes. The less is blessed of the better. Yes. And here men that die. Oh, okay, okay, brother, brother, I want you to do this. Here. Here. There. And also. Here, there, and also. Here, here, in this dispensation, men receive tithes that die. Here, men receive tithes that die. Here, men receive tithes that die. But what does it say, Brother Andy? But there, he receiveth them. But there, when Abraham paid them, there he receiveth them. Of whom it is written that he liveth. 20th century New Testament. His life still continues. The Amplified Bible. He lives perpetually. Look, if old Mel had been a, if he had been an earthly king, this was written at 60 A.D., he'd have whiskers as long from here to that door there. I mean, he's still kicking around living. So it couldn't have been earthly. He couldn't have been an earthly king and still been living when Paul wrote this in 60 AD. If he did, Methuselah wasn't the oldest man. He just got in kindergarten. I mean, this is, I mean, this is 19, this is 1900 years. This is 1900, 1900. Nope. About 2,011 years, somewhere between 2,011 and 12 years since that, to that deal, that, that old Mel at this time of writing of, the, of this letter would have been 2,000 years old. But boy, he's older than that because he didn't have a beginning of days or him life. Back up and get that. I, 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 I want you to get that again. And here men that die. Yes. Receive time. Yes. But there, when Abraham was paid, there it witnessed, yes. Of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. He liveth. You know what an ETH is? You know, when, 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 you, get, when you get Brother Dallas to the buffet, all you can eat buffet, he eateth. Amen. When you get Brother Andy, to get him to the steakhouse. He'll eat his and yours. Guy across, he eateth. Like some folks in this church, while we're having church, they sleepeth. I told a fellow one time, I said, I'm a whole lot better preacher than Paul. Guy looked at me and said, yeah. You could tell, boy, his mind is running. I said, Paul had to preach to midnight to get that guy to go to sleep. About 15 minutes. I can... <laughs> Brother Junior's late pastor uh, he had one old guy, I think he's still alive, that uh, by the time he sat down, he'd go to sleep. 
He slept all the way through service. And uh, it aggravated, it really aggravated the elder. He'd fuss and fuss. It never did any good, did it? But, uh, but somebody said that Brother Kevin has said something, and he said, I didn't, I, don't, I didn't believe I said it. So I had him to bring the tape, and it's back, to, back in the days of the old uh, reel-to-reel tape recordings. And said he put that tape on to listen because he wanted him, he, he just know he didn't say that. He said the next thing he know, the tape was going clack, 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 clack. He said he don't remember remembering any of it. It put him right to sleep. <laughs> he said I better kind of let the old man alone. Amen. He said I put myself asleep. But he got Edith sleepeth. Well, here it said he did. He does what? He does what? Liveth. He liveth. 60 A.D. Melchizedek was living. Now, there's going to be a contrast. And we're going to see this in this seventh chapter. i got to hurry. Y'all going to give me a few minutes. You know, I'm, I'm going to finish this up because I probably won't never do this again. I've only done this a time or two in my life. I've mentioned it before. I ain't never went through all this. So, you know, I, I can't help it. Amen. This is one of them. But y'all get off plenty easy. Praise the Lord. So you can't fuss. Amen. So, uh, 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 what was I even going to say? Hallelujah. You're just missing Jesus. <laughs> <That's why. laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who said he wasn't listening? <laughs> <laughs> we was in a meeting in Princeton, West Virginia years ago, and this guy preached. And he preached and he preached and he preached. And it was a fellowship meeting. How many of y'all remember them wonderful fellowship meetings? Where everybody got up and carried on for about three hours and he put the preacher up. I mean, you're so full and running over, I'm telling you. So, so this guy, they, they didn't even put this guy up to about 10 o'clock. And he was a hooping and a carrying on. And he had preached, he had preached an hour and a half. Then he said, for my last scripture, I want brother called the guy's name. Give me Romans chapter 1 through verses 1 through 26. I got you. I mean, it's already, it's already after 11 o'clock. So something distracted him, and the preacher turned around and said, Now, what was I saying? And old brother McDonald from North Carolina said, In closing. <laughs> uh, I kind of feel that spirit here, praise the Lord. All right, where are we at, Brother Andy? I don't, I don't know what I... What I seven and nine. All right, seven and nine. Let's, let's go there. And as, I may say, and as I may so say... Yes. Also, also here's, the three, here's the three groups of people that paid tithes. Abraham paid them to Melchizedek. That's there. Here, men received tithes. There, under the law. Levi also paid tithes. While he was yet in the loins of Abraham. Go ahead. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Where are you at? What verse are you at? Uh, 10. All right, Brother Tory. He's in verse 10. All right, go ahead. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood. Yes. Sir. Oh, yeah, I know what I was going to say. Now you're going to see the distinction between the two priesthood that the seventh chapter of the book of Hebrews is given. And the distinction is. One is living ever. And one dies and another has to take his place. See, when Jesus was on the earth, Jesus did not act as a high priest. Jesus came on the earth to be the sacrifice. He did not act as the high priest until he went into heaven. And when he went into heaven, he became that high priest. That's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. So, 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 so here, here you're going to see the distinction. Go ahead. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, yes. For under it the people received the law. Yes. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order? Yeah. Of Melchizedek. Yes. And not be called after the order of Aaron. Yes. For the priesthood being changed. 
The priesthood being changed. There is made a necessity and change also of the law. Go ahead. For he of whom these things are spoken mm-hmm. pertaineth to another tribe. Yes. Of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Go ahead. For it is evident that our Lord sprang up. So when God. the Lord came in the flesh, he didn't come through the Levitical family. But he, but he come through Judah, whom nothing was said about a priesthood. He went outside. Because he's wanting to show everybody there's a change. Go ahead. And it is yet far more evident. Yes. For that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there yes. arises another priest. Yes. Who is made, not after the law of a carnal commandment. Um, somebody's telling me about this, you know. Well, it says another. Well, sure it says another. But another don't mean a different being. Well, let me, let, let, let me give you one. Uh, 14 and 26. I'll send you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Is that what he said? For said, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. But you know him for he dwelleth with you now but he shall be in you. Verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He was another in that he was able, he was there with them in the flesh to comfort them. He he was Emmanuel, God with us. But in the church age, he's not Emmanuel, God with us. He's the Holy Ghost, God in us. Well, hallelujah. In the Father, he is is God eternal. In the Son, he is a God eternal. External. And in the Holy Ghost, He is God internal. Yes. Yes. Holy Ghost. God the Father above us. Yes. The Son of God with us. And the Holy Ghost in us. Yes. Right. Well, praise the yes. Lord. Praise All right, move on. Who is made not after Whoop. the law of a carnal commandment. This priest is not made after the power of a carnal commandment, but of an endless life. This high priest is never going to to die. That's when he died. He wasn't in the office of the high priest. He was the lamb that was sacrificed. But when he got up out of that grave, oh, I can prove that. You prove, oh, I can prove that. Give me four, four chapters of the book of Hebrews about the next to the last verse. Somewhere in there. Seeing that we have a high priest. Yes? What does it say? Fourteen. Seeing that we have a high priest. Uh-huh. Woo! Who's passing to the heavens? A high priest is passing to the heavens. When he arose from the dead in John 20, he said, touch me not. Now folks use that old chimney corner. Say, well, touch me not for I'm not glorified. That ain't in the Bible. That ain't in the Bible. You can't find that in the Bible. That's not even in the Mormon Bible. Or the Catholic Dubai Bible. That's not in the Bible. There's 300, there's 31,172 verses in the Bible, and that's not in it. It might be in the book of Jasher that nobody's found. But not in the Bible. Because he didn't say that. Because when he was resurrected, he was resurrected immortal. We're sown mortal, we're resurrected immortal. But he said, Touch me not. 20 and 17 of just St. John. For I have not ascended unto my father and to your father. Well, why couldn't why couldn't she why couldn't she touch him? Because you can't touch a high priest. You can't touch the high priest when he's in possession to take the blood into the mercy seat. And nine and twelve of Hebrews said, by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So Jesus resurrected. Took the blood into heaven, put it on the mercy seat. And then the next time, they're able to grab his feet and hold it. He said, "Feel my hands, feel my feet," because he had all he had already he had already done that. He had already done the job he's supposed to do. I just throw that in. Go ahead. Where are you at? Seventeen. Yes, we're almost through, folks. Be encouraged. For he testified. Yes. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Yes. Why would he say that if Melchizedek was dead? 
if Melchizedek was an earthly priest and died, then there'd be no difference between him and the Levitical priesthood. But he's shown the difference between the Melchizedek priesthood and the Levitical priesthood is one dies and one is eternal. Are you glad you got an eternal priest? What does it say? Yes. For the law made nothing perfect. Yes, yes. But the bringing in of a better hope did. Yes, yes. By the which we draw nigh unto God. Yes, yes. And inasmuch as not with, without an oath, yes. he was made free. Yes. For those priests were made without an oath. Yes, yes. But this with an oath, yes, yes. Yes, yes. The Lord swear will not repent. Yes, yes. Nor are the priests forever after the order of Melchizedek. Yes, yes. By so much which Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Yes. Yes, but they could not continue because of the reason of death. They died. Now he's contrasting Melchizedek with the Levitical priesthood. And he said the difference is, is they could not continue because they died. But they are to preach forever after order of Melchizedek because he don't die. One dies and one don't die. Go ahead. Oh, but this man, why he's still called a man? First Timothy 2 and 5, there's one God and one man. Between God and man, and that is the man, Christ Jesus. 17 and 32, in that day when God shall judge, uh, judge the world, but that man, Christ Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost. Yes, yes. That come unto God by him. Yes, yes. Seeing he liveth ever. Oh, what a priest. Are you glad he's a high priest tonight? Only reason you can sit in this church and raise your hand is because you got a high priest. Just like when you was out in that world and you needed a Savior. Just as bad as you needed a Savior in that world because of your sins. You need a high priest in the church for the same reason, because of your sins. Go ahead. He ever liveth to make intercession for them. Yeah. For such an He's still a living. Yes. yes. For such an high priest became us. Yes, yes. Who is holy, harmless, yes. undefiled. Yes, yes. Separate, separate from sinners. Yes, yes. And made higher than the heavens. Yes, yes. Who needeth not daily as those high priests. Yes, yes. Who offer up sacrifice. Yes. First for his own sins and then for the people. Yes. Yes. When he offered up himself. Yes. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity. Yes. But the word of the oath. Yes. Which was since the law maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. That means he finished the work. He finished the work. Well, praise the Lord. Well, you won't have to go through this again. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, you don't have to agree with this. But I've just given you my opinion. Everybody's got an opinion, and i got one that's mine. So I, 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 I can't help it. You know, when I, when I see the less is blessed or the better, the biggest thing God had in the Old Testament, there wouldn't have been a... Well, what about David? There wouldn't have been a David without Abraham. What about Samuel? Wouldn't have been a Samuel without Abraham. What about Moses? There wouldn't have been a Moses without Abraham. Abraham, Abraham... I'm not taking anything away from God. I'm talking on a natural on a natural scale. Abraham's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. There wouldn't have been there wouldn't have been nothing without Abraham. But and said the less was blessed of the better. I'm still I'm glad I'm still being blessed of the better. Only difference between now and then, Brother Carpenter, we know his name. He's the King of Righteousness. He's the King of Peace.